going to start Can, or not starting continue our journey all right welcome to Titania to today I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kedeshim in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. It really is. Michael, as always, is here from Germany. Good, good afternoon. I actually, is <laughs> most of you <laughs> that do post are always here like Natine from Canada, John from North Carolina, like Liba and uh, Davida in New York, Diane in Arizona, Tony in Costa Rica, Julia in in uh, Pennsylvania, David in Sacramento, all of you here every day, Darren, Tim with us is in Texas. Uh, oh, Bridget Tor. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Welcome. Okay. Who else is joining us here? Well, we have Instagrammers. We have Rachel every every day here. South Carolina, Koi, likewise in Peru. Uh, Some others I can't make out. Stearns. Rena in Colorado is with us. We have on Clubhouse. We have Celeste. We have Marcy. We have Michael. We have Eliana. We have Adam. Beautiful. Okay. We continue in the fourth essay, a lengthy essay to understand the uniqueness of practical mitzvahs that are done practical in the sense that they're done in practice in a material with a material object so for example the esraic right from the citron family that we use on uh, sukkis or parchment scroll of tefillin so 
it contains, it's a physical object that contains the sparks of tohu. So how is it that it becomes a divine object? How can it change? Like, how is it that you have a, a, a citron fruit and you have a lemon? A lemon is just a lemon. It's not holy, but this citron fruit elicits the sparks of the of of tohu that become purified, right? Until it's an emitter of object, it's not purified, it's not elevated, it's not it doesn't have any um, holiness to it. How can it elicit the the vessels of Zuna Vatsilos to bring a rectification of purification that now makes it into a mitzvah object, becoming a holy object in 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 its being, right? As opposed to uh, you know put it next to a lemon, it's not. Take the parchment that are part of tefillin and take another hide of an animal and you use it for something, you know, whatever else, that it doesn't become a mitzvah object, doesn't become a holy object, doesn't, it, it doesn't, how is it possible that it elicits in it from on high that light of God that now is vested within the esrei, within the, the, the parchment for the tefillin or, or for any mitzvah object that now it becomes in a state of godliness. See, Alta Rebbe gives a metaphor for this. And the metaphor, we've had this metaphor before in chapter, or in letter 20. The metaphor is that when you take a seed and you put it into the ground, it decomposes. And what it does, because it decomposes, it arouses the Mother Earth and the power of Mother Earth to now grow something that is um, so much greater than what you put into the earth, a seed. So the the parchment, the esrig, there's nothing about it except that it elicits the light of God and through using this as a mitzvah object, as the seed elicits, arouses something greater than itself, it itself becomes decomposed and arouses the power that's vested in it, in Mother Earth. What's, how's it vested in there? Because God said, let the earth sprout forth fruit trees. Right? Tache aritz, it's pre. It's interesting. God didn't say, let the fruit tree grow. No, no, let the earth, it's coming from earth. It's Mother Earth, the power within it. Now, in order to have Mother Earth do that, you need to put that seed in the ground. That seed is incomparable to what comes out of it. A fruit-bearing tree, pleasant to the eyes, delicious to the, to the palate, the fruit. So... That metaphor gives us an, an idea on how something so insignificant can bring about something so significant. A seed that's so insignificant, right, that arouses and brings out a power that's beyond it that can be now grow into fruit-bearing tree. So the same thing is this physical object, you know, versus another one physical object of an esrei versus the another physical object of the es of, of a lemon right so this esrei is because it's now going to be used as a mitzvah i mean the way we elicit that is because it's being used for the mitzvah that it, it even though it's it's seemingly insignificant, like the seed is insignificant, yet it arouses something so much greater than itself, the power of God, as like the power that God vests in the earth, that it should 
now makes the tree grow and a fruit tree grow from the earth so now it's it arouses that power that's way beyond it to be vested in this object the light of god which as we said the kalim of zuna vatsilus the vessels of zun zun is is, is um, the emotions and malchus meaning the union between the male and female in atzilus right of uh, the six emotions and and malchus sovereignty royalty that and that now through that union a list brings about something much greater than what was the arousal from below that elicited from above um a divine light that now vests itself in this asterisk in this parchment and it is now sanctified it is holy it is a different you know thing of holiness the very essence of the light and in further in Kabbalistic terms now it, it it brings that spark which is like that that spark that's in the spark of the uh, of um, of the 288 sparks of tohu which is the name of sag of God if you recall right the name of sag shame sag right six the numeric value of 63 is we we went through previously to understand from the yudke bovke from the tetragrammaton and when you spill it out four different ways that it can be spelled out that it will uh, four different numeric values four different aspects of the divine name and how uh, and how it brings about creation so the name sag samach gimel brings about is the world of tohu the world of chaos where that those sparks are that now fell into the physical of this world but the physical of this world the rest of the physical doesn't become sanctified and holy but this esteric does because it that spark that's there is eliciting the um the from atzilus from adam kadmain from the very essence of the lights of the primordial man the infinite light that encompasses all of the creation and primordial man that there is now that light comes forward as opposed to a mere glimmer from primordial man um, it is um, the very essence of primordial man right and as as just a, a man down here is made up meaning a human is made up of um, the emotions in Malchus so likewise primordial man there um, the the very essence of that light that then creates the union that is brought down here in to the physical object that now when you do the mitzvah the actual performance of the mitzvah you accomplish to imbue it with that holiness because until you did the mitzvah it's not imbued right similarly with the study of the careful of the, of the laws of that any particular mitzvah you also arouse here chachma bin das because now it's about the learning of it so it's not about the 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 mitzvah which would be a you you create a union between divine emotions in malchus here because of the study of that object right the tefillin or the esrik for example um, you arouse chabad of the ten divine attributes in the vessels of zun right um as they are in primordial man above and then you bring down that light as we're doing now in the study of torah bringing down that light and through our act of um, of studying torah now in conclusion the author of it says that well that's all good for positive commandments because through the act of the positive commandment the act of putting on the tefillin of, of making you know taking the four the, the yesterday and the four kinds 
um, you elicit, you create that union, you elicit that light from on high. But how about the negative commandments? Negative commandments, prohibitions, right? What, what happens? You don't do anything you're holding back from doing. So, and especially if it's a prohibition that is not a something that is often uh, occurs, like the detailed laws of Piggle. Piggle is um, when you had the wrong thought about bringing an offering, uh, the thought of the time period to bring it, you um, invalidate the offering. So th the question that he remains and will not be answered right now, but what the forthcoming class will be dealt with, is how is it in the prohibitions of the Torah that are about holding back and not doing something, how do you elicit the light of God there? Right? in the study of that in the study of that um, mitzvah so like you know the prohibitions that come with uh like tefillin or the esrig or whatever it is right and you're studying that when you study it in the positive aspects of the of the commandments so then you elicit but how do you do it when there doesn't lead to any practice because it's about a prohibition so more of that to come. Now there's so, you know, okay. I hope that was clear. All right. Who else is joining us? Any questions? Any comments? Very mystical. Davida, is this what happens when we elevate the material into the spiritual? Yep. Yes. That was our discussion. Yes, absolutely. Okay, anybody else? All righty. That's it, to be continued. A reminder, folks, that this Sunday, Monday, we will be having our charity uh, matching campaign, collecting funds to, um, to be able to do what we're doing here. Um, it costs. Uh, yes, some people are TRC members, that's true, but uh, uh, there's... Uh, Costs that are related with this, and Chabad Zuch and Kedeshim here in Montreal is uh, the organization that you know, takes responsibility for it, which is means me. Um, and uh, we're doing a fundraiser that you can all help. Uh, whether and everything that you give will be matched. For those who are in the United States, you can give in U.S. funds and get actually a U.S. tax receipt. Um, and um, we need everybody's help. And if you can even more than just help, if you can um, pass it on to others, I'm, I'm sending out an email soon to everybody that I have that will have, uh, you know, that you can cut and paste a part of it and just forward it, modify the, the message and send it to friends and family that they can go on to the website, charity.com forward slash uh, CZK you know, forward slash will be my name or even better if you'd like to make a team which just means you get your own link and you, your name would be on the link so when you send it to people they can um, give so that would be really uh, appreciated if you can um, help in that way um, and um, and pass it on to others so they can also help and tell them that this is, you know, something that is important to you, enhances your life. I, 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 I just got to share with you, some of you were on the Zoom when it happened. Um, you were on the Zoom when it happened. Uh, a woman came in. I didn't recognize her. I said, here's a pushka from my mother. Um, she's elderly, not so well. Uh, and I, 
did recognize her because over 30 years ago, um, I helped her to, um, she was, helped her to get a class about Taras Mishpocha, about uh, family purity. And this she reminds me because I don't remember, to be quite frank. I do, rem her mother, I know, I remember, I know well, and she's just not well. And, um, and then I remember her too, but I didn't recognize her because it's over 30 years. And she has five children and, and eight grandchildren. Um, and says, because of that one class, this is what came out. This is what came out from the one class um, that you made happen. And as a result, um, I got married, five children, eight grandchildren, and, you know, completely uh, observant Jew. And, um, well, I was just blown away. That's what we do. We're here to make connections. We're here to make impact, change people's lives as yours have. Pass it on. Carry it forward. And one way is, of course, the message itself. Another way is to get people to give. And by giving, we can make a greater impact. We can make a much greater impact. All right? So um, if those who would be kind enough to reach out to me and just tell me, okay, I'm ready to help. That that would be the best thing. So then I, I you know, can focus in on those who are, are ready to to help. So just forward it forward to me, whether it's an email, a text. You know how to reach me, and um, together we can partner, right? Because you're giving and others giving is a partnership, and that partnership is crucial. If it's a one-way street, not so, not so good, not so healthy, a one-way street. Any relationship that's a one-way street is not the, is not a healthy relationship. Many of you already give, I know that, and if you're already giving, amazing, thank you, um, thank you. So, get others to give. You know. It, because, get others to give. That's all. Um, all right, folks. Rambam is coming up. Thank you. Okay, so uh, again, reach out to me and let me know. Thank you so much. All of you. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and a great Shabbos. God bless.